Good day, everyone. This is episode six. And in this episode, I interview Jackie Golrajani, who is a good friend of mine. I've known her for a very long time. We used to work together back in AG's People Support, where she was still in the training department. And now, more than 10 years later, she is now a social media influencer with over 19,000 followers on Instagram. And get this, 114,000 followers on TikTok. This is a really cool interview because it's a bit more raw and a bit more on the emotional side. We cover a lot about what's been going on in our careers in the last uh, 10 years and the relationship challenges that she's had to go through and really overcome to get to where she is today. And uh, basically basically life in general. It's, it's a very exciting episode, guys, and I hope you enjoy it. All right. Hey, Jackie. How's it going? Hi, John. Thank wow. you for joining it's me like today. We haven't, <laughs> it's like we haven't caught up earlier, but yes, I'm super duper excited to be here, John. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. I know it's been a while. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'm super excited too. So just, just a little bit of background for our listeners here today. Um, I first met Jackie when she became a part of my team of um, communication coaches in a company called AG's People Sport way back in 2009-ish, maybe, 2010. Wow. And um, boy, has she taken off from there. Uh, today, she is a full-time host, model, content creator, and training consultant. She's worked with some of the biggest brands in the country, and I've compiled a short list of some of the brands that uh, you guys might recognize. So she's a mainstay in Lazada's Last Live as an endorser where she promotes products like Dr. Kong and, and Bioscience. She's one of the most sought after hosts in the country. Nux. Wow. <laughs> Hosting events for <laughs> companies like uh, EY and the Philippine Army and some of the other big companies out there. And uh, she was also a guest in Showtime's Kapareya Who, where she had to pick the surprise oh celebrity guest. And you know, I think you had, you had to go with a date on a date. On a date. Yeah, yeah, I saw the pictures, but <laughs> there was it wasn't on the YouTube video. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> oh, really? Okay, cool. That's, yeah. that's, that's I want to hear more about that, but uh, uh, <laughs> later down the line. Uh, so, Jackie, you also have your own YouTube channel and is slowly or yeah. rather quickly building her following as uh, your following as an influencer on Instagram. You currently have uh, 20k followers. Uh, as of today <laughs> and then yeah. um, on top of all that uh, you're also a fur mom to two cats Louie and Alexa right wow you've done your research okay I feel yeah, like I did stop. <laughs> for sure for sure I did a lot of stuff in between yesterday and today. oh my okay and, okay done and, the research uh, yeah for sure and uh Watching, watching you, Jackie, pursue your dreams with uh, such dedication, passion, and energy is just so inspiring to me. And as someone who's also on the journey of self-actualization, it's wonderful to find uh, someone on the same journey that I can look at um, in times of disappointment, when there's doubt and hardship, and uh, kind of feel inspired and re-energized just because of um, what I see you doing day in and day out. Um, so without further ado, Jackie, welcome to the show. My first question, how did you get on this journey? Like, did you know all, ever since you were a kid that this is the journey that you wanted to have or when did this start? Honestly, I'm the kind of person who's just very intuitive and one thing led to another, basically. I didn't really plan everything that's going on in my life right now, but if there's anything that I have, like, realized about my entire journey i'm always living in the present so let's say i'm not happy with where i am i am very true to myself about those things so i'm always reflecting i'm always trying to make decisions that could make my environment better so in this particular case i'm here now because of these small decisions that i've made throughout my my journey but you know i'm really flattered um john and i just want to say that i i don't really feel very um comfortable like talking about myself like whoo you know I'm all this and that because um <laughs> I think you know I haven't really figured everything out as well yet and I think that that's okay and I think I'm gonna come from a place of of a lot of realizations and humility so yeah, yeah absolutely and um honestly neither have I 
Um, I have been in the BPO industry for 15 years now. And for a long time, I thought that this was it, right? Like I thought that um, I wanted to be an employee for the rest of my life and I wanted to be a VP. But only recently, like at least a few years ago, like maybe a year ago, did I realize that uh, that's not really what I want. Like what I really want is um, freedom, autonomy. Sorry. And, um, oh, hey, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened to the camera. One second. Sure, sure. Let's repeat, but you just, you can edit this right. I'm sorry, John. Some technical or is, issues. Or is. Like my camera like stopped. <laughs> Hello. Is it a is it a built into the laptop or something or no? It's, it's a separate not. One? It's a it's a separate one. That's why. No worries. Okay. It happens. Awkward silence. While you're in the momentum, <laughs> <laughs> the timing is great. Great job, Philippines. Okay, hold on. Sure. No worries. Okay, great. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Um, what was Yay. I saying? Um, yeah, so so I I, um, I never really thought that I would be on this journey. I was this uh, I, I only got onto this path just a few years ago when I started thinking about becoming like a businessman or an entrepreneur. Um, right now what I really value is um, freedom, time, and autonomy to really do the things that I feel would make create value for other people, right? Um, right. So it always changes. I think I think we always um, it iterate, and um, I think we always um, evolve. Sometimes we evolve multiple times in a single day, right? Um, <laughs> so I mean, like like for you, you were a communication coach when I first met you. Then um, I feel like you had a solid career path and training where. I think the last role that you um, were assigned as a, in, in the training department was a manager. And then based on your LinkedIn yeah. profile, which I didn't even know about, you're currently in uh, project management, right? And now you're a yes. celebrity. So that was... Uh, no, <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> but I think I just got really, really lucky as well. I think it's a combination of being true to yourself and a lot of hard work, definitely. And uh, yeah, being lucky as well and just meeting the right people. I mean, I'm sure you know that you, you have your network as well. And I think it always pays off when you help them out. Like in my case, I'm now affiliated with a startup company, which is awesome. It's completely different. Oh my goodness. Let me just tell you when you were yeah. describing corporate earlier, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it brings a lot of memories. Um, but I, I mean, I do respect people who are in corporate because some people are truly built for it, but you know, as a creative myself and as somebody who has a lot of side gigs, I figured it's something that I just wanted to let go of. Like, it's a different definition of who I am now. And then now I'm with a startup company. It's awesome. It's so awesome, John. Like, you should join us. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you should meet the CEO, too. He's awesome. He's awesome. I would I would yeah. love to meet the CEO. If you think he's awesome, I would love to meet him. And maybe we can go from there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Did you know? Yeah, I what? know. I know this is an interview about my journey, but like my CEO right now, or the founder actually, co-founder, um, used to be my trainee in oh. my previous company, and he has also grown like so much. And so from from teleperformance. Yes. So you're not like okay, let's cut this interview and then let me talk to him. <laughs> but you should be doing his interview too. So no, I will. Yeah. Maybe I will. I'll, I'll definitely <laughs> when it, if I get a chance, I'll definitely ask for an interview. That's for sure. Um, okay. So let, let's talk about that a little bit. So when I met you, you're a comp coach, and then that comp coach is fairly kind of similar. I mean, it, it's a little bit related to training. But then you're now a project manager. How did that happen? No. Let me just think about that because it's been a long time since uh, I transitioned from comp coach to becoming a trainer. But I recall specifically when I joined corporate, um, you obviously meet people, right, when you're working. And then the first person who actually inspired me was my trainer. And I knew exactly at that time. See, so things change. As you said, we evolved throughout time. But at the time, I knew that I wanted to be a trainer and I knew that I had to you know, that I wanted to be a trainer. Like I remember, okay, it's my video again. It isn't the internet. Are we, 
<laughs> I can, Sorry, I can hear you pretty, okay, pretty again. Better, yeah. <laughs> okay, going back. No so I don't know if you remember, um, but I remember because I wanted to be a trainer so bad, uh, sitting down with Chris at the pantry, just pitching him my idea. I didn't even know I was pitching an idea. I just said, hey, you know what? Our agents could use this and that. This is. I, I, I was reading this book called the millionaire mindset and it talks about being proactive and having all of these like beautiful uh they call it uh, wealth files or you know characteristics that make somebody successful and then i didn't right. know that i was pitching an idea and then the next thing i knew i was in front of you because you were my manager back then i was in front of you i was in front of uh who else was there oh my goodness Art? it's a blur it because Art? it's been a long time was it uh, the managers like i was in front of the managers in a conference room and I was pitching my idea. Like at the time, I didn't know anything about training. Oof! Now that I think about it, I'm I have balls. My goodness! Like I, I like to do stuff even if I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, isn't that weird? No, that's, that's not really weird. weird. That's uh, that's <laughs> I think that's that's what you call a go-getter mindset, right? Like you come up with something, okay, you think it's gonna you. have value for that. other people, and you just go and get it. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And the only thing that really made me so inspired about training, I knew that it was a great, like fulfilling moment wherever I would see improvement from, from others. And I really liked that. I really, I got off of that. Like I really love seeing improvements. And then from comp coaching, which is like one person, you know, uh, one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? I kind of thought, hey, I want to be able to, to teach more because I like it. I love that. I vaguely, I vaguely remember trying to convince you to become a team lead just because it's probably the same thing. But I think you, you preferred being a trainer more than a team lead in operations, right? Yeah, quite accurate. Yeah. Sorry, am I, am I frozen again? <laughs> Are you angry? No, no, no. It's cool. You're going to edit a lot now. This is no really worries. weird. Hold no on. Worries. As long as I can hear you. Do you want to... Are we going to be... Are you going to record the video? You're going to like keep the video, no? Sorry I about that. Dami, am, but it's okay. cuts. No worries. Hold on. Let me try again. Ano ba to? Nasa momentum na tayo. <laughs> <laughs> Nakakaloka. Wait lang po. Wait lang, Dodong. Dodong. Sandali lang. Kailan itong picture na to? This is really nice. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Gusto mo yung uh, awkward silence. Okay. And after you wait. Um, ano yan? Uh, mega fashion week so that was uh, I think three three years ago when I was still See? with Celebrity? someone lol <laughs> no <laughs> Ayan, yeah, and sorry about we're that back. Oh, goodness gracious is it okay. the internet or uh, I don't know camera? I think <laughs> I think it's my camera but anyway anyway where were we so where were we uh, <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, so you were you really wanted to be a trainer. You felt like um, it was something that uh, would, would really uh, you wanted to give value to more people compared to what you were doing as a palm coach, just because it's going to be a classroom setting instead of one in one. So and then you were there. Yeah, yeah. And I remember they were asking me for a curriculum, and I'm like. <laughs> What's the curriculum? So I Google it. <laughs> and, and I didn't have formal training at all. But you know, it's really true. And I think a lot of people who are listening to us can relate to this. The more you do not know, <laughs> the more confident you are. So that's ignorance true. is bliss. <laughs> well, that? But, there's, you know, a, there's a study that supports that. Uh, I think it's a Dunning Kruger effect. Um, okay. Where the the more ignorant you are the, the smarter you are the less confident you are exactly what you said actually it's a right. it's a phenomenon just because you don't know what you don't know you feel like you know everything and so uh, <laughs> it gives you more confidence <laughs> when you're there yeah. when you're there oh shoot how did i get oh my myself goodness. into what oh is my that goodness. yeah <laughs> so Sorry, anyway I'm waiting for your <laughs> I don't want to talk over, <laughs> but yeah, but have you experienced the same thing? I mean, I'm sure you, at one point, were you ignorant? Well, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> like, like the, the, the worst 
um, situation I ever got myself into because of my ignorance was when um, Rahul came into the picture. You remember Rahul, right? Um, I remember Rahul, yeah. So, so when he was new, he was a director. He was new to Hilton at the time. And before Rahul, it was, um, I, I forget who the VP was. It might have been uh, either Tony or Chino. And compared to Rahul, they were pretty much, they were pretty hands off, right? Like they were pretty hands off. And so I had a lot of autonomy. And so, but I was, re- I was still a new manager at that time. But I felt like I knew everything. Like I really did. And so when Rahul came in, because Rahul was very detailed, he was, he had so much experience in, in the BPO. Yeah. Like I couldn't, I couldn't even scratch the surface of what he knew. Like I was there, so I had my chest puffed off. And uh, I was like, I felt I was walking around like I knew everything and then Rahul would ask me these questions and I couldn't answer the questions and I, it, it, he and I had a really bad start because of that. <laughs> and, and, yeah, he was so pissed at me for a long time but uh, I think I was able to um, make up for it over the years. Um, yeah. It was, it was pretty supportive yeah, of me. Yeah, I think you were great. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think I made up You were up a great manager. It. Yeah, it, I think it's uh, it's all about potential and and polishing things, right? I mean, polishing competencies that you already have, like it's just bringing it out, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty raw back in uh, back in Hilton. Yeah. Um, I, I I think I, I changed a lot since I uh, since that time. <laughs> I uh-huh. My standards yeah. were so high that um, a lot of people that I were was leading, like. Um, like some of the TLs that I had, like they really lost their confidence just because of how, how hard I was on them. But I'm not I'm not like that anymore. I, I, oh, really? I, cor- I correctly assess people <laughs> now. So instead of assessing them based on my own, like looking at them from the lens of what I could achieve versus what they could achieve. And anyway. I feel you, I feel you. And I think at some point that was advantageous as well for you at that time, because I'm sure you were young and I can relate to that because Siguro, if people were to describe me for those who met me when I was also raw, they would also probably say the same thing that mayabang yan or, you know, because you needed to be a tough cookie at that time too. Because if you wanted to make your career grow at a very fast pace i guess so like we learn that's it so right now i agree i'm a different person too <laughs> a lot think, more humbled i think if i had a um like a time machine and this be this version of myself went back to that time i think i'd be more effective than the way i approach things i was really aggressive back then because i had to get things done but i've mm-hmm. learned so many ways to get things done apart from just being raw aggressive right there's a lot of ways that you can motivate people and really help them become you know the best version of themselves um without actually scaring them (laughs) scaring (laughs) the crap out of them that was my only way back then i didn't scare people but okay you did so yeah traumatizing right yeah (laughs) there's a lot of i know like i remember you remember ernie right like uh ernie was yeah it was my punching bag back then. I actually apologized really? you know, a few months oh, ago. Oh, no. Yeah. No, he wasn't angry at me, but because of just me understanding, like, the way I treated him back then, like, what I know now, I feel like I mm-hmm. owed him an apology for some of the stuff that I did to him. I think it was really bad for him. <laughs> We're early really and obeyed. Yeah, he was he was like like you should have like almost every day. And then like the best thing about Ernie yeah. is that um, he is such a nice guy uh, that he never took it personally. Like we were friends the whole time. Like, yeah. I would I would finish yelling at him for an, an hour straight, <laughs> and then we would go downstairs have a cigarette and you know act like nothing ever happened. And, and really to us, it, it wasn't really anything. But I felt bad for him. Like he could have had a better experience, maybe. He would been more confident oh. um, that sort of thing you're yeah. interviewing me now <laughs> i know it's funny but it's good because i'm sure you can relate as well to a lot of the things i'm saying for sure so yeah yeah, yeah definitely I, I i know exactly what it's like um, to evolve right like um you know what one other fun fact about me is um a few years ago maybe three years ago i actually 
um, was an INTJ. And then I took it sometime, I took the test okay. again. Yeah, an introvert. Um, For those who don't know, introverted, what's TJ? I'm trying to remember. Uh, Just, you, you were judgmental. The T is, what's an INTJ? I'm trying to remember. Wait, let me Google that. <laughs> I cannot. Yeah, yeah. Can, for for our for our listeners, I, I don't remember it either. Yeah, uh, I should know this because I was a learning and development trainer. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that to you. Okay, Myers Briggs. Wait, right? into okay, introverted. Okay, intuitive thinking and judging. So for those who don't know, introverted is the opposite of extroverted, of course. Intuitive. Yeah. What's the opposite of intuitive? Uh, See, I gave us problems. <laughs> and then yun, no. thinking, uh, uh, and then judging. Uh, okay, so you're an INTJ. Okay. Yes. So this this was then, this was this was two years ago, and then I took it again mm-hmm. this December, and then for some reason I don't know if this is normal, but I am now an ENTJ. So I became an extrovert. Is that weird? It's Hello? weird, right? Can you hear me? <laughs> oh my goodness. This is funny. One moment. One moment, por favor. I, I can I can still hear you, by the uh, way. Do, 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 do. I cannot hear you. <laughs> Gusto mo yun? Wait. Ang daming technical. Has this happened ba? Sorry. Technical issues. Hello. Hello. Ayan. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Edit no mo na Sorry. Go on. No worries, no worries. Um, so uh, the weird thing is, you, two months ago I took the test again, and now I'm an extrovert, an ENTJ. Have you ever seen that happen? Is that weird? Gonna... Oh. Well, it's very com. Well, not really common, but it does change. So that's why we have to constantly update or take the test, diba? Right? So yeah. Wow. Okay. Extroverted. Wow. Yeah, that's how did that doing. happen? I don't know. <laughs> and that's why, I, <laughs> that's why I can do a podcast now. Like before I could, so I'm pretty, I was very shy growing up. So. Um, okay, your turn. So, from a trainer, how did you become a project manager? Like, how did that transition happen? Ooh, how did that did happen? You get, did you get tired of being a trainer, or was it still no? Actually, now that I think about it, because see, I, I'm one who's, who's like, okay, I have always believed that my path has been, I don't really know the outcome, but I just like take the steps that are provided or given to me. So at the time, I think I was performing, well, of course, they wouldn't have tapped me for the role if I wasn't performing good. So there was a need for a project manager. And Again, I have no background in project management. <laughs> it's always like that. Um, but they, that I think my team at the time saw that I could do the job because, I don't know, I, I hate to say, okay, I did really well, but I think I was a pretty, I, I did pretty good as a trainer. And um, that's the time when they offered me the role. It was just like that. It was offered to me, actually. So I was, was promoted. A project manager role for the training team also? Or was it, it was just a general not, project management role? General Sorry. project management, yeah. Um, and I was handling, taking care of a, a program called Teleperformance University. So it's it's actually out of the open, so people can search for it. But Teleperformance University is a scholarship program that um, is offered to leaders from different parts of the company, uh, countries, so to speak. So we have people coming in from India, we have VPs coming in from you know, Australia, so on and so forth. And they take this learning and development program. So I'm, I was managing that at that time. So I was, yeah. Yeah, that was So that was, that was, that was a tiring. project. <laughs> that was your first project as a project manager or was it the That, that was my one main project. project. That, mm-hmm. that was my role. So every, this happens annually or well, it's, I think it still does, but yeah, it's, it happens annually. So I was taking care of, of that. Okay, so it's, it was still kind of related to um, like training in a way, right? Just because, yeah. Um, yeah. Hold on one second. 
Now I'm the one who's so talking. Talking technical. <laughs> oh, I have it Sorry. Uh, it's okay. I can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One point for me and my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel so bad anymore. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, I've never had technical difficulties before this one. Isn't that weird? Really? I'm oh. like the or something. No, no, my end. I think so. Oh, man. Hold on. Let me just switch off some of this stuff here, maybe. It's not just going to quit on Zoom, no. Jackie! Hey, hold on. Sure. Take your time. Um. ko kasi sinasabi kaya naghang. Actually, what's happening to me is uh, uh, my disk is full. So I have to delete some stuff. Okay. Coolness. Crap, now it's. Uh, Fine. I'm going to comb my hair. Don't include do this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, we're back. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so, so clar uh, clarifying question in the project management. Did you have to take any kind of um, like certification? Because usually there's uh, like PMP or was that part of your plan to have that um, at some point? No, actually, it all happened so fast. It was actually very firefighting. <laughs> of our, they needed somebody. That's it. And I was the person oh. who was most qualified, I believe, in the team. I know. So, yeah. Most qualified. With no most background. Most qualified. <laughs> <laughs> <With no, laughs> Fed to the wolves. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, but that's... In, in fairness, yeah. I, I've had little projects in a month. But, like, these were... I don't even remember the details of the projects. But these were, like, small projects um you know dealing the, the, the normal stuff as a trainer like you deal with um yeah so Client, you're probably uh, the most projects. reliable person in the team that's probably the qualification that you had and why you were selected Maybe. yeah and, and it <laughs> happens hungriest. that way right like the hungriest yeah exactly and sometimes yeah. you know sometimes opportunity is uh it never really comes the way you plan it, right? Like sometimes it just happens and you just have to be ready for these kinds of things. You just have to jump, right? So how, how long were you a project manager? Uh, like were you handling that project, like two years? I've handled it three, I, I think two, yeah, three years. Uh, I've handled it three times on TPU. So that was quite something. Um, but I think your next question would have to be, so after that I transitioned to quitting my job, right? So is that what happened? Now that is that the next, <laughs> next chapter? <laughs> yes. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I have really bad memory, by the way. So I'm trying to recall. I think this is my way of, of um, coping, you know, because I've had a lot of like not really good. But it was, of course, I've had a lot of good experiences, but, uh, you know, it was a package um, altogether of a lot of things. But um, at the time, I I just felt like I was too ambitious, you know, I was trying to um, work on my career. And then at, at the time I was in a very serious relationship and I felt like I wasn't being a good partner um, because uh, I was so busy with growing, you know, in my career. And I, yeah, so I said, um, <laughs> So, sorry, nag-iisip ako kasi baka madama yung ibang tao. So, I'm trying to avoid kasi talking about me. me na, na. You can probably cut this na lang. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yung part yeah, sure. na yun. Um, but yeah, so at, at the same time then I felt like I wasn't able to do um, what I wanted because when I became a project manager, this was also the time when my Instagram started taking off. Um, I just really had a passion as well. It was a hobby. I had a passion for makeup. You know, I really also wanted to um, share at the time the things that I was doing um, in my career. And I also wanted to 
talk to my following about that. And there was just so many things going on. And I don't know what came to mind, but I thought, okay, if I'm going to let go of, I need to let go of something. So I let go of my corporate job. Was that, yeah. was that then, scary? Was that, was it, that scary for you when you did that? It was very, yeah, it was very scary, but I was so eager to get it done. Like I remember my last log off, I was so happy. I was like, yes, this is it. I transitioned everything, I'm free. You know what I mean? Like that was so liberating, but I didn't expect what was going to happen after. Um, and I thought that I was going to be so on the go and like, uh, I really thought that it was gonna be smooth and it wasn't. I was so, 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 so sad, man. I was so, I don't want to say depressed because I don't want to use that word very lightly, but I was, I was, I was a wreck. I was, I felt, okay, maybe, maybe did I make the right decision? Why do I feel so empty? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe I just had that sense of importance. Like people actually needed me when I had my corporate job and here I am. Okay. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> so it was, it was really that happened. at first. Like the 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 did those feelings, those emotions happen um, quickly, or was it like how long before you started feeling that way after you resigned? Okay, <laughs> just to be honest, okay, for a week I was fine. I was like, woo, it's all good. You know, I could rest. I don't have to get, go to work. But then it kind of started um, creeping in, like after after a week, and then. I think it was a combination of a lot of things, including the fact that um, mm -hmm. my relationship was also not, I, I cannot avoid it, I say, um, women's intuition, right? You feel sad, you don't know why, um, and then mm. you find out later on, okay, there was something really wrong. So right. yeah, that was also a huge factor. Um, yeah, I can't avoid it. It, it. it was a part of my narrative and yes. So, so just to Anna, just just for the listeners who are so confused right now, uh, basically, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> basically, and, and it's public information. I think you have it on your YouTube channel, right? I think you went through. I, a breakup, I took it down, right? but it? yeah, I went I, through a breakup. Yeah, I, it's okay. I, I it's saw fine. it earlier, just now, like not just now, but earlier. It's still there. Ooh. Did I put <laughs> it on unlisted? No, because I was actually downloading some videos um, for my new, my new video. So yeah, I'm gonna take it down again. <laughs> no, okay. but it's not on public. But yeah. Yeah. Speak so, like, oh my God, what was that? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, John. It's there. Uh, so let's see. Um, I think I still might have it up. Like it episode was, three. Yeah, episode three of your life updates. The plot twist, blog three plot twist, right? Plot twist is still there? <gasps> it is, it is still there. I'm gonna I'm take it down now. No, cause I, sorry, I was, I'm uploading a new video right now. I'm starting to get back on YouTube and then it's not yeah. supposed to be there. Cause it, it, it'll it affect another annoying person. So I'm trying to just look, get away yeah, from yeah. it. But it's no, it's no secret, you know, so we can talk about it, it's fine. Okay, cool. So, so you were, <laughs> So the so one week after you resigned, um, did you already go through the breakup, or you were just having a sort of like a woman's? My mom has this, by the way, women's intuition where you know something's wrong and you just can't put your finger on it, and so this yeah. sort of, you know um, kind of like a snowball of emotions where yeah can't really get comfortable with where you are. Correct. Correct. So I didn't go through the, the breakup immediately. Um, I think I had to, I think I had to wait for like, what, four, five months before finding out. And that was really scary because, yeah. Wow. <laughs> because, so okay, now I don't have a job. Okay. <laughs> and then I was staying with this person and, you know, let's, let's admit it financially, he was the one who had the job and he said he was going to support me and what I was, you know what I wanted to do and yeah that was that was really that so was he was fun. your he was your safety net in I guess yeah to keep it simple right and yep was yep. that the reason why you felt comfortable um just resigning because you knew you had a safety net you knew you were in a stable yeah, relationship and that you got that person's commitment to 
like um, float to you at least for a few months, right? <clears throat> to be to be honest, yes. I'm I'm not gonna lie. That was definitely one of the huge deciding factors. I remember this person saying, and I think he meant it. You know, he's like, "Who's asking you to work anyway? You, know, you can do what you want." Because I've always been telling him, "Hey, you know, I have this this um, project. I can't really do it. I can't commit to the client because I have a very demanding kind of work." So he was very supportive, and you know, he wasn't a bad he wasn't a bad person altogether. So yeah. He was my safety net. Big yeah. mistake. <laughs> well, you know. I'm happy always... now. It wasn't funny back then. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, but you know, the most the most interesting, the most successful people, almost always go through some form of hardship because, um, like, who we are today, especially if we're in a situation today where we feel like we've achieved a lot of our goals. It's usually because you had to go through so many hardships and overcome those hardships. And you know, who you are at the present time is usually a summation of all of the things that you had to go through and you know, to be who you are to achieve success, right? So I mean it's good that you can laugh about it now. And I think you're you're kind of in a good place. You're moving on. You're I am. You know, on the path to success. But do you think you would have um you would have gone through with your resignation had you known that this was going to happen. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't, right? I mean, that sounds obvious right now. Um, honestly, the relationship was one of the reasons why I resigned. Although I didn't say, I didn't really promote that idea because I don't want people to kind of think, hey, you should live for other people. But at the time, it was it was a very serious romantic relationship. And I thought, hey, this is a priority. I mean, if I'm gonna live with this person forever, I might as well make sure that, you know, he's taken care of. And I wasn't really, I wasn't really doing that because I was so busy with my own career. So it was also a deciding factor, which is kind of ironic, <laughs> kind of ironic. Yeah, it's funny how things work out. Um... But um, to answer your question, would I quit even if um, I knew that was going to happen? Honestly, at the time, maybe I would have been scared, but I still would have done it one way or another eventually. Yeah. Because it was, yeah, the work itself um, just didn't give me the. Okay, maybe dapat ikat mo tama rin ni O hindi maganda. <laughs> but I wasn't very happy with my work na eh. so parang I, I still would have I still would have resigned because I was too hungry as well to achieve um, the things that I am trying to work on now. And and I know I know Miss O right like um, we're not that close but I know who she is as a person yeah. and I think she would respect that right like not not everyone. She does is uh, cut out for uh, to be an employee. Not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur or, you know, mm. un- self-employed or a business person or, or something else. And um, I think she is cognizant. She would be cognizant of um, anyone yeah. and respect anyone who pursues their dream, right? Which is what you're doing right Correct. now. Correct. So, I, I think that, I remember that's having, okay. Yeah. yeah, and I'm pretty grateful for her because I remember having that conversation with her I asked her and I was actually crying in front of her I said oh, so much emotions but <laughs> I can't help it I was crying and I was telling her am I too ambitious and she said I can give you a counter offer right now that you cannot resist but I'm not going to do that because I respect that you really want to achieve what you know your heart wants and it's not incorporate anymore and I, I do respect her for that kudos yeah. to bosses like that yeah, absolutely. I, I try. I try to be one as much as I can, um, because I don't want to be in the way of a person that would, you know, in, in someone's way, uh, where that person is trying to pursue their dreams and really make a difference to the world. And I, I just want to be supportive of that, right? Like, um, so at, at what point did you start getting back on your feet again? And what what were the things that helped you get back on your feet and and really start maybe crawling or walking again on the path of, um, of this journey? Or yeah. Does that make sense? It does make a lot of sense. But, you know, to be honest, I'm just getting started. And what 
I, I'm talking about like how I healed it. Oh my goodness. I moved a lot of times. Um, sorry, Magulo, one more time. <laughs> Your question is, how did I exactly, uh, when did I start no, getting back on my feet? Because you were, you were like, so at that, I imagine that when you decided to resign, your momentum was really strong, right? Like you were, you had the momentum going, your, uh, your everything that wasn't your employment was already starting to take off. You had the confidence, mm -hmm. um, you were very inspired and then the breakup happened. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, now you're in a place where you have to recover emotionally, spiritually, yeah. right? And then, so, how did you recover from that? And how did you get back on your feet to start that journey again where you're pursuing Correct. your dreams, right? Right. Alam mo, John, it was quite a roller coaster because I found out that I was being cheated on. So I ran away. I stayed at a hotel, not the most financially wise decision. <laughs> I stayed at a hotel for three days. I thought that was the best decision because I felt like I needed it. I deserved it um, to clear my mind. And uh, I remember staring at the ceiling of um, the hotel room and thinking, oh my goodness, it's sinking in. I, I started to have self-pity. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm back to square one. Like, it's back to zero. Where am I gonna go? You know what I mean? I mean, money was not a consistent like flow. I didn't really have a stable job. So it was really, really scary. and what was funny well, it wasn't funny but what was yeah what i noticed was i had to just keep going um i remember taking us taking side gigs and i wasn't very i wasn't feeling feeling very well i i've been crying the night before and then you know i have to be like pretty and like all good the next <laughs> and day so yeah. yeah and then every time i would like go home oh my goodness every time i would go home um i would feel like um like the world was ending. So this is what happened. So I moved, right? I moved from one place to another. Um, after staying at a hotel for like three days, I, I asked my friend um, if I could stay at his place. Um, it's a really close friend of mine um, from like a childhood friend whom I've helped in the past, uh, which I wasn't even aware that I was helping him. So he's like, hey, I wanna help you. Nothing romantic going on, but he's like a really, really, really good friend. So I stayed at his place. Um, for like a week and I said you know what I'm not very comfortable I think I need to like have my own place and then I rented um, my own place finally and to be honest there were even days when I thought because my place had a balcony <laughs> I didn't jump okay <laughs> but like I never thought that it would cross my mind like there were so many nights when it was just so painful um, and really I felt really really lost that I that it crossed my mind to like, you know, jump, but like it didn't happen. Like I didn't get there. I loved my yeah. life too much, but it, it it actually happens, right? So, so there. Um. So how did I exactly get back on my feet, man? What, what kind of um support system did you have? Did you have in place back then? Like obviously you had the friend right. that you stayed for a week. Yeah. Was there anyone else that uh -huh. helped you through that rough rough time? I'd have to say my mom. Um, my mom I've always constantly spoken with um, every single day. We're not really close. Um, my parents and I were not really, really close, but like this entire experience has taken our relationship to a different level. Um, my mom has become my best friend. Uh, like we, you know, we could really talk about all of these things now as adults. So that was something. I had friends um, whom I've reconnected with, you know, one of the lessons I learned about this entire experience is you got to make sure that you take care of the people around you because at the time, honestly, I didn't have, I didn't have a lot of friends. I did not have a lot of friends. I, my, my whole world was my ex, my work, my colleagues, but you know, I mean, they, they weren't really friends, friends, like not, not the kind of friendship that I would like envision. So yeah, I had I had a support system definitely. They really helped me. I was like, <laughs> I was like going in circles, talking re repetitive stories, but like they really helped me a lot, like talking about what I've been through. So yes, that's one. Um, just fast forward to where I am right now, and how I 
got back on my, I'm still getting back on my feet, actually, to be honest. That's why I can't yeah. answer your question directly because I don't think I'm there yet. Um, yeah. But I'm really, really grateful. Yeah, because when I, I got reconnected with this um, trainee that I had before, and what was funny was I didn't even respond to him. I scene zoned him. <laughs> so he said, so he said, hey, how are you? I saw your post. It was quite casual, obviously. And then I said, oh, I'm good. Thank you. And then how are you? Something like that. And then and then he responded, hey, are you are you doing or are you interested in doing like making content or making podcast, something like that, or sorry, recording podcast um, series? And I'm like, and I didn't respond to him. I scene zoned him only to find out that and I'm really grateful because this person has been super persistent. Nothing romantic again. Bakit ako ganito mag-isip? <laughs> Hindi kasi, initially kasi pag lalaki, di ba? Let's face it, di ba? That's okay. Kasi kasi you reach yeah. out to. It's a guy uh, and you're single. Parang ano yan. So this guy has a fiance, obviously. Like he has his, his life going on too. So, um, It's good because you're, you're getting ahead of uh, what the audience might think. So that's fine. Right. The defensive mind. Hindi naman. Pero siyempre na is... Naisip ko yun, naisip ko yun, kasi nga, I'm a girl, and minsan ganun talaga ang guys, din eh, generally. Right. So yun, and then, makulit, makulit yung pag-approach niya, actually. So he even asked my friend, si Pammy, who was a trainer of mine before, uh, trainer, uh, now a friend, uh, kung interested ako because I was doing project management before, and then, yeah, this is, where I landed, I, I I really think I'm I'm really lucky and I'm really really grateful and I might I might have done some good things in the past and it's just probably now that I'm reaping everything. So yeah, I haven't done a lot, but I think I've been mentally strong, and I'm grateful to my friends for that. Yeah, I, I definitely agree that um, you have a certain level of mental fortitude to be able to get through something like that. Um, and fairly quickly too, because um, that honestly, that's a defining moment, right? Like it, it's, it could define you one way or another. It could define you in such a way that you get, you know, you're broken and you never recover. And sometimes it happens to a lot of people too, right? Yeah. Um, but there are cases where when something like that happens, it defines you in a way that makes you better, right? It makes you stronger and helps you you know, it, it remakes you into something that was better than what you were before. And I think that's uh, that's where you are right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to have a conversation with you about this. Um, so, so what is it that you do now for, um, like you're still in project management? Um, so right now, yeah, since I'm with a startup company, it's a completely different setup. It's not like, corporate um and I, again i don't mean to bad mouth poor people in corporate you're in corporate um but but it's a completely different experience because we're a small team of enthusiastic people it sounds like it sounds like a website we're a small team of enthusiastic people <laughs> I mean, we're a small team uh we treat each other like family and we're just so well knit like that um and the kind of work that we do is very or i don't know it, it feels very authentic it's quite organic in a way like i'm i'm facing clients and it's it's very relationship centered and you know we highly value a lot of respect love family um, for the team so yeah that's what I'm doing right now but at the side as well I'm starting to build my my content again so I just actually I don't know because since you saw my YouTube channel <laughs> uh, and that's the reason why my other video was um, out because I had to download it so yeah, I should take that down. Uh, but um, yeah, you might have noticed that I have uh, redesigned my page um, because I'm getting back on track and creating more and more content. And right now I really feel honestly that these experiences that I've experienced had to happen because right now whenever I encounter my following, these are women, I have my following are, are women Whenever they say or they share stories about, hey, I've been cheated on, blah, blah, blah. I can relate to them more. It's, it's, I, God, why did you let me go through this? Is it because you want me to be able to, to, um, you know, be of influence to other women? But, you know, it, it, I think there was a reason why this all happened. And 
I'm, I'm at my happiest right now. So creating content, having work-life balance, working from home, the most amazing thing. And I purchased my own place recently. So yeah. Wow, congratulations. Designing it, <laughs> designing uh, yeah. it to my desire, <laughs> which is the best thing. I mean- Building a yeah. home for Louis and Alexa, right? Oh yeah, for Louis and Alexa. Like I'm so happy I can now decide the color of the 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 spoons I'm gonna get, you know, or or the cover, or the every every little detail right now in my home. I'm I'm pretty happy. Like it's it's today I'm at a place where I'm building my sanctuary and making sure that I have the right mental state and I have the peace of mind to really create content because I don't think I can help others if I'm not healed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and it's a process, right? It's it's not going to happen yes. overnight. It's always something that you ha are going to have to keep working on. Um, for me, I honestly feel like um, there's no retirement. So what I want to do is I want to be um, a business owner or an entrepreneur. And then I feel like um, from there, I just want to reach my, my full potential, right? Like in, in there's no, I don't feel like there's an end to that. Like you see yeah. these, uh, these people, these uh, successful businessmen, they go into their 80s, sometimes even 90s, and they're still working. They're still trying really hard to, you know, uh, be the best version of themselves. And right. that's, that's the journey, right? It doesn't change. It never that's ends. Right. You just keep going until such time where you can't go anymore. And maybe at that point, you should you, you'd be satisfied with if you look back and you'd be satisfied with uh, with everything that you've done. I think that's the most we can hope for with our limited time on earth. Wow, that got really dark <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> like, why did you fast forward to the end? Wait long. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I definitely agree with you on that. And there's just so much right now that I have planned for the year. Um, I can't really jinx it, but being an entrepreneur and starting your own, I don't want to call it a business, but yeah, it is a business. Um, but yeah, starting your own business, it's great. It's great. And I'm grateful because the people that I'm working with right now are, you know, willing to invest in my talent. And I'm just very lucky. I think that you need that in life. You have to be lucky. You have to be um, hardworking and you have to really take care of the people around you. I think those are my top three right now, like lessons, um, that I am valuing. So you mentioned so lucky, about being an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. Taking care Go of ahead. people around you. What's the third one? Sorry. And you have to be really hardworking. You know, you hard have to be able to right. grab, you have to really grab whatever opportunities you have and really make sure that you are worth the shot because not yeah. everybody is going to take a chance on you. And you got to be able to do it, not for others, so to speak, but really challenge yourself and do what other people have believed or believe you can do and right now that's yeah. what i'm doing you know and if i may add because girls kind of do this um i used to be so hard on myself i still am i do a lot of self negative negative self-talk and i'm trying to work on, on that too because yeah I, it's okay if you can't really completely like you're not a you know you're not perfect perfection is fundamental but yeah <laughs> that will help that, that definitely helps me um get through as well so you mentioned something about being an entrepreneur. So what, what is it that you want to do? Ba? <laughs> no worries. Before I, before I answer that, I just want to say, um, so you okay. have to, you, your number two item was uh, you need to be lucky, right? And for me, and I think for a lot of people, I've, and I've heard this from a lot of different people also, like people I follow either on uh, social media or like successful entrepreneurs, like the way they define luck is... Um, it's when opportunity meets preparation, right? So you have to keep working on yourself so that when the yeah. opportunity happens, it translates into like luck. But in reality, Correct. you've been working on yourself and so you're ready if the opportunity comes. So that's uh, that's something that's that I really believe in. So right. um, entrepreneur, myself. Um, uh, so there's a few, th I'm, I'm still thinking about what I wanna do. <laughs> So there's no there's no finality yet. Although I did give myself a deadline because um, okay. I'm also in the process of being 
uh, of assessing myself, right? Like I, I want to mm-hmm. know exactly mm-hmm. what I want to do, but I definitely want the autonomy that comes from being an entrepreneur, like the freedom. And I also don't, I hate the idea that uh, I'm working nine hours a day, 16 hours a day sometimes, and I'm building someone else's dream. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like whoever the CEO is, I'm building his dream, right? And I spend, and he's paying me for the time that I spend to build this dream. Like, I want to take that, those time, that time, which is the most valuable commodity, right? Like, you can never get it back, um, and use that to build my dream. Um, and my dream yeah. is to be free, right? Like I want to be able to do whatever I want, enjoy the best things in life, and um, spend help as many people as I can. So one thing that I'm looking at right now is um, cryptocurrency or blockchains. I don't know if you're familiar with that um, or if you follow that at all. Um, but this technology has the potential to really change the world, like. Um, like, uh, like, so um, there's a, I'm sure you've heard of Bitcoin and Bitcoin is right mm, now yeah. at about 40,000 US dollars for, per coin. But back in the early 2000s, it was about hundred dollars per, per coin. So that's a Whoa. huge jump from, from where it was, right? Correct. And um, the problem with Bitcoin is that there's no, there's really no, um, uh, what you call it, uh, like real-time or uh, use case application. Like there's no real use for it, right? Like the technology is just like gold where you can just buy some and then you can store your value and right. understand yeah. that it's going to, you know, uh, rise in value over time, right? But right. there are blockchain technologies that are coming up. Um, that have real life applications that could really help a lot of people. Like for example, the one blockchain that I'm really looking at right now is called Cardano. Um, so Cardano is made by a guy named Charles Hodgkinson. And he was one of the founders of the number two blockchain in the world, which is uh, Ethereum. The problem with the number two blockchain in the world is it's in the US and goes up against all of these um, traditional institutions like banks, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and all of the financial traditional stuff. And so it's going to be a hard climb uh, for them to really do that. Um, the difference is that Cardano, which is the technology that I'm really interested in, and I actually invested a little bit on it, is that uh, they don't plan on doing this in the U.S. Like they're not, impl- they're not creating technology based on that platform for the U.S., but more on people in Africa. Right? Because people in Africa, they don't have any financial institutions. So if you're, like, if you're in your 30s and you've, um, you want to start a business, let's say you want to start a farm, and you want to, like that farm, the way you envision it is that farm will feed your entire community and at the same time enrich the lives of the people you employ and the people that you feed. Um, it's very hard for you to do that if you're an African uh, because there's so, you can't borrow money. It's very hard to borrow money. There are no financial institutions in Africa, or very few at least, and you have to go through so many hoops to get that done. So the vision of this technology that I'm talking about is that um, they're going to implement it in Africa, and it will solve a lot of these problems. And so there's an opportunity to not only make some money, but at the same time, um, like help people out. So that's that's that was a monologue. It was really long, but that's where the entrepreneurial oh, uh, oh. vision that I have is at. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. When are you gonna get started? Okay, now I'm. <laughs> I'm uh, so the the technology itself, there's a roadmap to it, and uh, okay. like it, it hasn't really been implemented yet. So March this year is when. It gets implemented. So uh, right now, I'm talking with a lot of developers. Uh, not a lot, actually, just one or two developers. It will help me okay. create an app um, on the platform once it's available. So yeah, so it's it's wow. kind of ongoing. That in like uh, you know, we'll That's see. That's so exciting we'll for happens. you. I'm sure I it's going to take it's, off. Uh, I'm sure it's going to take off. The, the yeah. question is if I'm going to be on it when it takes off. <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> well, you better be on it. <laughs> uh, I better be on it. So that's that's what I'm working towards for sure. 
Um, and it excites me just because it's not just about making money, it's about helping people as well, right? Okay. Like, um, that's, yeah. that's very exciting for me. Yeah. Correct. Um, question for you. Well, my turn. Right. <laughs> um, so if I wanted to be a content creator just like you, where, where should I start? Like what, what, oh. what kind of um, approach should I take? Like what mindset should I have? <clears throat> Look deep within, know exactly what it is that you can offer and don't be too hard on yourself and don't think about what other people are going to say because that was my mistake before. And that's why I'm getting back on track right now because I used to go on trends after trends. I mean, it's very helpful, obviously, but I learned that being a content creator is like making friends. You know, there's so many out there. There are many content creators, but you're not going to click with every single content creator, right? There is just going to be that one person or not character, that authentic um, content creator that you're really going to connect to. And I've had, I have a lot of really loyal um, I don't want to call them followers. I call them friends. I have a loyal, a lot of loyal um, watchers, viewers uh, who were constantly, even if I'm not active on social media, they still message me and they're the first one. They call it, they call it the notification spot. Like they're the first few people to, to post or to comment whenever you post something. And uh, don't be too worried about qu uh, quantity. You know what I mean? I mean, it can be very especially for me, because I kind of started earlier. And then there's that pressure that, oh, you know, you should be growing right now, like it should be more than what you have right now. But I don't think that you should be really conscious about that. Just focus on the content, make sure that you're still enjoying it. And you'll be fine. Because sometimes when you're too worried about, oh, it's going to pay the bill. So I need to post X, Y, Z number of content because I have a deadline and then I have to pay right. for this and that. It just takes the fun out of it. And right now I'm, I'm happy that I have my other sources of income because it, it's not the storyline anymore. Like I, I don't create content just because I have to. I, I create content because I want to. So that's it. Know exactly what, what you want and make sure you're authentic and true to that all the time. Stick to it. You'll be fine. <laughs> and and should the, so definitely agree with that. Um, it's almost like a like they use a business term where you find a niche, right? Like you find a niche that uh, yeah. only you can provide. Um, I think a follow-up question would be, do you base your content of your stories, your experiences, or should it be based on uh, what you like and what you, you know, what you like or what you like doing more? Right. I think it, I think it has to be, for me, I gravitate more towards the second one that you said, what you like, and what you love doing, because it's so easy to create content. You can create content really quickly if it's something you really love. Mm. And it's fun like that. If it if it's something that you have to do your research, obviously you if you wanna create content like that, then you have to do your research on that. If it's something you're not really interested in, where's the fun in it, right? So it yeah. has to be yeah. always, I don't know, for me, content creation, is is therapy and i i stick to that now because there was one point in my yeah there's one point in my career wherein i had to hustle you know and create content and like i was jumping on trend after trend i'm like oh never mind this is not me so there are, are you trying are you planning on <laughs> well you know I, I never really thought about myself as a content creator but I really do enjoy talking to people like you um, on this podcast. I never really thought I would, but um, yeah, right too. now I probably <laughs> do this like back to back to back and just have a conversation because, you know, um, I don't know, it's it's fun. Like I, I never really knew I was a conversationalist or something like that. So I guess you could say I'm a you're content great. creator now. <laughs> you are, you are. See what you're yeah. doing right now is something. Yeah, you're 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 creating content right now. <laughs> you're interviewing people and you're talking about something you're passionate about. And see, this comes very easy for you, right? Like you don't have to overthink it. It just comes. It out. does, and and it really does feel so easy, just because um, the audience that I I have in mind is really me, right? Like the question I ask you, yeah. the questions I ask you are are what I ask myself and what I ask every person that I interview because. Those are the questions that bother me and uh, that prevent me from moving forward. And so 
um, I get inspiration from, from people like you, from people who have been on this journey or are on this journey with me. And uh, that, that makes it easy. And it does, at the same time, inspires me while doing this, right? So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, and I enjoy it. And I hope I can get more people to say yes. I'm glad you said yes. So thank you so much for that, by the way. I'll connect you with somebody who's, who's going to be very great, I think, for the show. My, my co the co-founder of my current company. Okay. <laughs> He's awesome. Okay. Can't wait. Can't wait. Um, so <laughs> I just have a couple of questions left, like just last two questions um, that I always ask at the end of the interviews that I have. Um, so the first one is, and uh, you can answer this whatever way you like. Um, do you have any regrets in um, everything that you've experienced so far? Uh, if you don't have any regrets, that's that's good. That's fine. Um, but if you do, uh, maybe you can share with us um, and the listeners what those regrets yeah. are and what you might have changed. Um, Correct. Based on that, yeah. <clears throat> I should have started way earlier. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just jumped <laughs> because, as you mentioned, time is something that you cannot take back. And I don't know what I was, what was holding me back. Well, now I know I was too worried about what other people were going to say. I was too worried about, yeah, people around me basically. So right now that I have found my truth, I'm more confident. And I, I think I, I should have done this way earlier. I really should. That's my only regret and not let anybody hold me back. You know, I feel exactly <laughs> the same way. Um, yeah. But for me, it wasn't so much as uh, I was thinking about what other people said, although that's also been a problem of mine uh, that I've had to overcome at some point. Um, right now, I don't, I don't give a crap anymore. Um, <laughs> I think it comes with age. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does, right? Um, yeah. But for me, it was just that um, I think it, it's not so much a regret as more as a, like, I, I wish there was someone who could have help me find what I really wanted to do as early as possible, right? Which is um, one thing that I'm also trying to address here in this, uh, in this podcast is um, if there, there's anyone who's in college right now or is just graduating and, and going into college, I hope that this podcast helps them um, understand who they really are and what they really want to do because there's so much time that you can save and it's so fulfilling just exactly. to be on the right path as early as possible, right? Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So all this negative self-talk and like holding back, you're your number one enemy. That's it. So just jump. You're never ready. So just jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's absolutely perfect advice. Um, so my last thing, it's not so much a question, but what advice would you give uh, people who are listening to this and are thinking about um, becoming a content creator like you or they're currently employed and are thinking about quitting their jobs and uh, pursuing their dreams or um, whatever else they may be um, hesitating or afraid of doing, what, what advice would you give them? It's okay if you don't have everything, everything concretely figured out because nobody has figured everything out. So you're fine. Um, and your biggest best friend is going to be yourself. So you have to take care of that person because you are going to be with your own company for a long period of time. And it's going to be yourself who's going to have to motivate you every time things go, for the lack of a better term, just bleep this, but shitty, right? So yeah. it's going to be you who's going to really um, boost yourself up and you have to kind of be more independent. And that's one of the things that I have um, learned throughout this journey so take care of yourself and don't be too hard on yourself that's it that's perfect and i i, I love that because i've i've heard it a few times also and and maybe it, this will help you but um I, I hope this helps you but i i heard on one of the podcasts that um well one of the podcasts that i listened to there was a there's a performance coach that was being interviewed the performance coach caters to guys like um, andre agassi like athletes that are at the top of their game. And one of the things that he right. helps them with is um, training their internal voice. Like how you talk to yourself is a big, right. big 
uh, factor in being able to succeed in life and in everything that you do, mm-hmm. right? So, like, imagine how does Michael Jordan talk to himself whenever he makes a bad pass, right? Or he misses a shot. Right. Is right. he talking to himself in a way that is encouraging or, like, is he uh-huh. putting himself down a lot more? So this guy, the one that's being interviewed, this is helping athletes train their internal voice because the way he sees it, this is one of the most effective mm-hmm. coaches that you're ever going to have is yourself, right? Right. So when right. you make a mistake, you need to be able to pick yourself up and talk to yourself in a way that helps you instead of putting yourself down. So right. that's really Absolutely. powerful. Wow. Wow. And, and you know what's funny? It's, it's natural for us to go the negative route, you know, oh my goodness, I don't want to feel this way again, or I was so stupid, but it, it, it has to change and it takes a lot of conscious effort. I love yeah, that. It Michael becomes, Jordan, uh, what does he probably say? <laughs> yeah, I think about that a lot. I wish I could interview Michael Jordan. Right? <laughs> I, but guaranteed, he never doubts himself, right? I, I don't think he yeah. can ever say anything bad to himself, even if he makes a mistake, right? So, and I think that yeah. one, one thing that I can say probably is that if you're prepared enough, like, you know, you did the work that you're supposed to do and yep. uh, things don't turn out the way you thought they would, but you knew you did everything that you could do yes. to, to make the best outcome possible and happen and it did it. And I think you would be okay when you talk to yourself, right? Versus uh, where you didn't do enough work and then when you talk to yourself and things go bad then you talk to yourself it's probably going to be a lot worse when you have that conversation with yourself right <laughs> right 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 which goes back to your principles which is hard work luck and then luck. taking care of the people around taking you. care of people yep that it always pays off i was not expecting to be here um talking to you i was also not expecting to be working with amazing people in a startup that also helps other people. So it's all because of those three things. And I'm, I'm very happy. I'm living my best life. Wow. And it's amazing. just gonna get better. <laughs> I know, you gotta claim it. The uh, law of attraction, yeah. right? That, that stuff works. Yeah. You have to claim it, you have to create that vision of the future that you want. And um, every day you think about it, it's gonna be like the universe, God will make it happen, whatever, right? Yes. Awesome. So Jackie, thank you so much for your time. Is there any way that, um, or anywhere that we can uh, support you? Like uh, whoever's listening to this, if they want to follow you or support you in any way, how can we do that? Right. Okay. So I'm on, I have my website, um, JackieRaw.com. Well, it's in the works because I, yeah, a lot of stuff happened in the past, but yeah, so it's in the works and we also, you can also find me on Instagram. Um, I also post fun videos on TikTok, so you can catch me there and oh. yeah, on I YouTube, of course. I'm going to do TikTok. Oh, <laughs> why did I bring that up? <laughs> I'm going to hike my account now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you so much, John. I really had fun. Um, again, I'm just happy to to share my journey and my healing with everybody. And it's going to get better for everyone. I hope so. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I truly believe that. And Jackie, you, you've done um, the right thing so far to help yourself. And that will be rewarded. I truly believe that. And uh, you keep working on yourself, keep inspiring all of us that are following you. And uh, I'm sure we're going to have another conversation again someday where we've already achieved our dreams, right? Or maybe even before that. I don't know. After two years. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. For sure. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.